From the University of Leicester in the United Kingdom, this is Glenn Fulcher with another issue of Language Testing Bytes. The first paper in issue 31-2 of Language Testing is by Ryo Nita of Nagoya Gakuen University in Japan and Fumio Nakatsuhara of the University of Bedfordshire in the UK. They're concerned with a very practical question. What is the effect of giving test takers planning time prior to a paired format speaking test? Does it affect what the test takers say? Does it change the scores they get? The answers will inform the design of speaking tests, not only in high stakes assessment contexts, but probably in classrooms as well. Welcome to Language Testing Bytes to talk about planning time in paired format speaking tests. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you very much, Glenn, for having us here today. Let's start, if we can, with what seems to be a fairly straightforward issue. For most teachers, it appears intuitively obvious that if learners have planning time before doing a task, they're going to use that time to make sure that what they say is better than what they would otherwise say. And I, I realise here that what we mean by better has to be defined for research purposes. What does pedagogic research tell us about planning time? And is it as intuitively obvious as it seems at first sight? Well, um, this is exactly the issue that task based researchers have faced with during the last two decades or so. Uh, when several researchers started task based research using pre task planning in the early and mid 1990s, they thought pre task planning would simply elicit better performance from runners. As we think intuitively, planning time indeed led to better performance to some extent, but when researchers looked at the result carefully, they saw a very complex picture. In those studies, they usually measured runners' performance by using discourse analytic variables such as uh, fluency, accuracy, and complexity. In nutshell, much task based research reported the benefit of planning in terms of fluency but results were mixed in terms of complexity and accuracy depending on how much planning time was given, whether planning was guided or unguided, in what context and uh, with what types of runner. So the landscape of pre-task planning has become more complex than researchers initially expected 20 years ago. So let's now turn to language testing. In testing, it's much more common to manipulate contextual variables much more carefully than in pedagogic research and to have operational measures of what we might count as better performance. So is there anything in the language testing research to date that paints a different picture? Yeah, uh, language testing research has made the picture even more complex. Uh, most task-based research reports at least some benefits of pre-task planning, even if there were some differences in detail. Uh, but when pre-task planning was applied to language testing research, a good number of studies reported virtually no effect of pre-task planning in the testing context. There are several possible reasons for such inconsistencies between pedagogic and language testing research. And one of them is, as you say, in testing, we use writing scales to measure runner's performance rather than discourse analytic measures. So to better understand the complexities, we paid particular attention to the ways in which we analyze the collected data. Now, my understanding is that all of this research has been conducted almost exclusively with monologic tasks. But you're more interested in the paired format, right? So presumably you wish to see the effect of variation in planning time on features of interactional competence. Can you outline what features of talk you want to look at with the hypothesis that variation in planning time might cause them to change? Yes, we feel that we should really look at dialogic tasks because a paired speaking format is now very popular to measure learner's interactional competence, but we did not seem to have any information available about the effects of planning time on these tasks. So we firstly wondered how examination boards have actually decided to have or not to have planning time in the first place. The biggest difference between monologic and dialogic tasks is that in dialogic tasks, conversation is co-constructed between the speakers, so the conversational path is always open and subject to utterances by both parties. 
Evelina Glass's paper on paired test format was very good and it was actually a strong inspiration for our study. She categorized types of paired interaction into collaborative, parallel, and asymmetric patterns, and those patterns can always change at any point of the discourse. So we became very curious about how planning time could affect types of discourse in paired tests. Also, as Ryo has just mentioned, we thought that the ways in which we analyze the data was crucial. So we decided to look at the process of speech using conversation analysis, as well as the product of speech with more traditional methods such as discourse analytic measures and rating scores. Now that we have talked about the independent and dependent variables, can you very briefly take us through the results of your study, leaving aside the questionnaire and perceptual elements? Uh, just focus, if you can, on the difference in scores, discourse and conversation analysis. Sure. We first of all looked at rating scores under the two conditions, planned and unplanned, and to do so, we used a modified version of Iwa State Arts rating scales on fluency, accuracy, and complexity. Under the planned condition, participants got slightly higher scores on fluency and complexity, but we must say that the raw score differences were rather small. And for the discourse analytic measures, we looked at three types of fluency, speed, breakdown, and repair fluency, and syntactic and lexical complexity, and also accuracy. In addition, because we wanted to see some interactional features, we decided to look at term length, the number of words per term. The results showed that the planning time improved breakdown fluency and term length, but was detrimental to speed fluency. Then we moved on to conversation analysis. That was the most interesting and informative part of the study. We observed many collaborative interactions under the unplanned condition and parallel and asymmetric interactions under the planned condition. When learners did not have planning time, they had frequent short-term exchanges at the beginning of the talk, and as they went on, they gradually developed interaction collaboratively. They incorporated their partner's ideas into their own speech. In contrast, when they had planning time, they started with slower and longer turns, presenting what they had planned to say during the planning time. They were both busy in just recalling and telling their own ideas, ending up with parallel interaction. That resembled a series of monologues. After a while, they tended to fall into a stagnant period as they ran out of ideas. Then, towards the end, they started talking again, but the interaction was often asymmetric, one person being more dominant than the other. So, it seems that learners have better chances to demonstrate their own abilities to interact collaboratively when they don't have planning time at all. The most remarkable finding is clearly that pre-task planning results in talk that is much more unnatural in the sense that it lacks many of the features we now associate with interactional competence. I mean, can you briefly speculate as to why planning time has this negative effect on performance? Uh, there might be other reasons for unnatural performance with planning time for the logic tasks, but we primarily speculated that when learners had planning time, many of them tended to prioritize to say what they had planned and paid little attention to what their partner said. If fortunately they had planned similar ideas, they might have developed the idea collaboratively, but this is usually not the case. So under the planned condition, they started trying to tell their planned ideas anyway, without aiming to collaborate with their partner. As a result, in spite of using the logic tasks, the interaction resembled a series of monologues, of course, which is not test designer's intention. And in contrast, the, the unplanned condition seemed to push runners into collaboration. Uh, 
uh, presumably because each of them has no particular idea to start with. I mean, learners were more encouraged to collaborate with each other under this difficult condition. As a result, many of them co-constructed the conversation more collaboratively under the unplanned condition. So we are able to illustrate only one pair's interaction in detail in this paper, but interestingly, most pairs presented very similar interactional patterns. Yeah, that's right. We also had questionnaire data on what learners did during the planning stage and how they felt about their own performances. And it was interesting to find that only very few learners thought at the planning stage about what their partners might say. Also, when they were performing the task, they found it more difficult to produce ideas when they had planning time. This was completely counterintuitive, but this could explain that with planning time, the task became more like a monologic task where they need to produce ideas on their own. And this could also explain their struggles they experienced when they ran out of ideas in the middle of the conversation. Also, this might be slightly off topic, but when we talked about our results to my colleague Vlad Zegarag, who specializes in intercultural communication, he shared a very interesting study with us that he did on group discussions. At an international meeting, if the agenda is shared in advance, and if each country has a chance to discuss the issue internally, then the participants tend to become more egoistic and it becomes more difficult to reach a consensus at the meeting. Instead, when they are given the topic to discuss on the spot, they can discuss it more collaboratively to reach agreement together. It is fascinating that we can actually see some sort of similarity between what happens at those international meetings and at paired speaking tests. So, by giving pre-task planning time to candidates, are we actually encouraging them to be more egoistic unconsciously? Maybe yes. That's really interesting. And of course, this has consequences for the practice of examination boards. And I'm also assuming that there may be advice from this for the teacher who uses paired format tasks in the classroom. What is the headline message you have for both of these potential audiences for your research? Mm -hmm. We like to say that implementing pre-task planning time prior to a paired format is not advisable because it is true that providing planning time seemed to benefit test takers slightly in terms of scores and some discourse measures, but this study raised a concern that planning time might deprive candidates of the chance to demonstrate their abilities to interact collaboratively. As we mentioned earlier, a paired format aims to measure learners' interactional competence, how they can effectively and collaboratively communicate with each other. Then the discourse change due to the planning time could in fact function against tapping into the construct we'd like to measure in this format. So we strongly feel that considerations should be given to not providing pre-task planning time for this format. And for pedagogic implications, as reports in the previous task-based research, planning time tends to provide benefits in terms of cognitive aspects, which are more likely to realize in a monologic task. So it's perfectly fine to give planning time for monologic tasks. And this also applies to monologic test tasks. We still feel it's a good idea to give planning time prior to a monologic test format. But when it comes to dialogic tasks, if teachers aim to develop learners' interaction competence or social aspects of the language, then giving planning time is not a good idea. Anyway, the most important thing is that classroom teachers should be aware of potential impacts of planning time on students' performance. Providing planning time is a very easy pedagogic intervention, but it may provide a great impact on the performance. So teachers should be sensitive to how students would react to planning depending on the types of tasks. 
and they should make an informed decision according to the purpose of the teaching. Well, many thanks for coming on Language Testing Bytes to discuss planning time. It's one of those areas of research that keeps generating new and interesting ideas, which constantly inform our practice as both teachers and testers. I'm certain that the readers of the journal will get a great deal from your paper, and we look forward to seeing how you develop this research further in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. We hope you'll enjoy reading our paper. We've actually started the second phase of this study, and we hope to share the results with you very soon. Bye bye! Thank you for listening to this issue of Language Testing Bites. Language Testing Bites is a production of the journal Language Testing from Sage Publications. You can subscribe to Language Testing Bytes through iTunes, or you can download future issues from ltj.sagepub.com or from languagetesting.info. So, until next time, we hope you enjoy the current issue of Language Testing. Thank、you